there. Welcome to Tigrayan 101. Salamat. Kwaan at Tigrayan hade ba doha de mazakum. We're introducing this channel for those who would like to learn the Tigrayan language. Tigrayan is spoken by about 12 million people in Northeast Africa and other localities of Tigrayan expatriate communities around the world. The channel will also cover the culture and history of the people to a lesser extent. For now, in this inaugural video, we'll briefly discuss the history of Tigray and its writing system. Most speakers of Tigrayan live in their ancestral land known as Tigray, where their forefathers had built one of the greatest civilizations in the ancient world. As far back as 4,000 years ago, rural farming hamlets and villages were formed in the land. Eventually, towns and urban settlements throughout the land led to the formation of literate complex societies. By about 3,000 years ago, a great civilization came into existence. That civilization was centered first in the ancient city of Yeha, with a kingdom known as Deamat, and then in the ancient city of Aksum with the Aksumite kingdom. The pre-Aksumite Deamat kingdom spanned from the 10th century BC to the 4th century BC. The ruins of the great temple at Yeha was from this era, and it is the oldest standing structure in this part of the world, dating back to at least the 7th century BC. The temple's advanced craftsmanship testifies to the level of sophistication the ancestors of today's Tigrayans had so far back in history. The decline of the Amat led to the emergence of chiefdoms that last for a couple of centuries. The civilization was revived when the Aksumite kingdom was established in the 1st century BC, and lasted for a staggering 1,000 years. The kingdom had the port city of Adulis along its Red Sea coast, for what was then one of the busiest maritime trades in the world. The Aksumites had relations with world powers such as Rome and minted their own currency with texts engraved in Aksumite and Greek scripts. Archaeological findings showing ancient jewelry, among others, indicate that the Aksumites traded with civilizations near and far. The Aksumite kingdom, also known as the Kingdom of Aksum, ruled to the east as far as Yemen across the Red Sea and to the west as far as the banks of the White Nile River in Sudan. According to historians, at its height in the middle of the first millennium AD, the Kingdom of Aksum was, quote-unquote, the most powerful state between the Eastern Roman Empire and Persia. The city of Aksum, which is not far from Yeha, in central Tigray, was the place where all kings and emperors were crowned for almost 2,000 years from the beginning of the Aksumite kingdom to the 19th century, which was long after the kingdom had fallen. Settled centuries before Christ and showcasing some of the greatest archaeological and religious heritage of Tigray, Aksum is believed to be the final resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. The very stone tablet that Moses received from God at Mount Sinai are believed to be resting in the church of St. Mary of Zion in Aksum. The ark is never to be touched or seen by mere mortals other than the anointed priests tasked with guarding it. As a result, the town of Aksum is the holiest place for tens of millions of people who are followers of the Tigrayan Orthodox Church, which includes non-Tigrayans. In fact, the annual celebration of the St. Mary of Zion in Aksum is one of the largest, if not the largest, gathering of Orthodox Christians in Africa. The Tigrayan civilization gave us the Ge'ez language that is still used, although nowadays it's relegated to liturgical purposes only. It also gave us the writing system in use today known as the Aksumite Fidel or script, which is unique in Africa. That makes Tigrayans owners of the only civilization in Africa with a writing system that has been in use continuously since classical times. There have of course been modifications to the writing system, including adding new graphemes to represent new sounds acquired from contact with other language groups throughout the ages. The Aksumite writing system has been so successful that it has been adopted by other peoples, including the neighboring people of Amhara. The Izana stone, a stele from the 4th century still standing in Tigray, and other archaeological findings show inscriptions in Proto-Aksumite, which is the consonantal writing system that predated the Aksumite syllabic writing system in use today. King Izana ruled between 333 and 356 AD and was the first ruler of the Aksumite kingdom to convert to Christianity. Izana is often compared compared to his contemporary, the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, who also converted to Christianity around the same time. Izana's obelisk, which is one of the tallest ones standing at 21 meters or 629 feet tall, is a monument from pre-Christian times like all the obelisks in Tigray, and it is believed to be the last of the obelisks that were ever built in ancient Tigray. Sometime after the 4th century, the current writing system was developed from the Proto-Aksumite. It was first developed as a modified consonant only 
script but later as a syllabary in which every character has the sound of the consonant and one or more vowels fused in it. It has been said that the Aksumite civilization provided diverse literature that continues to be critical for the study of the arrival and spread of early Christianity and Judaism in northeastern Africa. In the 5th century, a group of missionaries known as Tashatuk Dusan or the Nine Saints arrived in Aksum. These were men from Syria, Constantinople, Anatolia, and Rome whose mission was to propagate the gospel of Christ, which of course resulted in spreading Christianity beyond the palace and the caravan route, which was between Aksum and its port city of Adulis. The earliest illustrated Christian manuscript in the entire world, referred to as the Garima Gospels, which still survive, were written at this time. In the 7th century, in a somewhat comparable turn of events, Muslim refugees fleeing persecution in Arabia arrived in the kingdom of Aksum. After securing asylum from the Aksumite king, they settled and eventually became the first Islamic community in Africa and have been contributing to the social and political identity of Tigray to this day. At the end of the first millennium, when the kingdom of Aksum was on the decline, a queen of destruction by the name of Yurit Kudit invaded from her stronghold from south of Tigray and laid waste to the kingdom, destroying urban and rural areas, burning centuries-old religious and public edifices, killing priests and royal families, and destroying centuries-old manuscripts. Text in the Aksumite script was for the first time published in a printing press in 1513. This happened in Europe when Johann Potkin, who learned Ge'ez, the ancient Aksumite language, from expatriate communities living in Europe, commissioned the cutting of fonts for the script and published a Ge'ez Psalter titled Psalterium David et Cantica Alica in Lingua Chaldi. This made the Aksumite script the fourth alphabet after Latin, Greek, and Hebrew to ever be used in the printing press. In 1531, the Ottomans and Imam Ahmed of the Adal Sultanate succeeded in reaching Aksum and causing another catastrophic destruction, including the destruction of the centuries old Church of St. Mary of Zion and its manuscripts. Unfortunately, Tigray has lost innumerable manuscripts and archaeological artifacts even since then, particularly in the 20th century and even in 2021. If you've been following the news about Ethiopia's last catastrophic invasion of Tigray, you will know the immense level of destruction and war crimes committed by the Ethiopian state. The good news is that there is so much to learn and study about this beautiful land and people. Tigrayans have a long and proud history, a heritage that no one can take away from them. Their language and unique writing system are just part of that incredible and indestructible heritage. That's why we're so excited to bring to you the first professionally prepared channel to teach the Tigrayan language. So in the the next video, we'll learn about the Tigrayan fiddle or script. In the meantime, if you'd like to know more about Tigray and its people, we have provided links to some materials by others in the description section down below. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and if you would like to learn the Tigrayan language, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye. Dahan Kunu.